Hello, this is William from Visual Components. In this video, I'm going to show you one way to display the product ID of a part in a process. For example, you might want to know what part is in a machine, what part is being carried by a human, what part is being handled by a robot. In the 3D world, I have a layout open, which you can find a link to in the video description. It's a simple use case. Parts enter a process point conveyor here. When the part is being processed, its ID is displayed here. What I'm going to do now is show you some steps I took to make this layout work. Once again, this is just one way to display the product ID of a part. I added a property to the process point conveyor here that reads the product ID of a component in its process. I'm then referencing that property in my statistics display here. In the component properties for the process point conveyor, if you go down to the very bottom of the default tab, you'll see this grayed out property called part product ID. This is the property I added to this component. I did make it read only, but you can see its value is being updated. And I'm updating that property using a Python script, which I'll show you now. I'll go to the modeling tab, and in the component graph panel, let's see the properties first. There's quite a lot, so I'll just find a filter called part and it's this property here. You can see its type is string, so it's a string of text. You can see its value. In the property panel here, I did make the property visible, but I did make it read only. And now let's take a look at that script. So I'll clear the filter in the component graph panel, hide the properties, and access the Python script here. So double click. It looks like a lot of code, <laughs> it is, but I swear I only added a couple lines of code to this script. You don't want to run away. What I first did is I went all the way down to the bottom and got a handle or a variable that references the component property I added called part product ID. So it's in a variable called part product ID. So now I can use that variable to get or set the value of the component property. Of course, when you reset the simulation, you want the value to be empty which is what I did here on line 117. And when you run the simulation, you want the value to be empty as well. You can see here on line 28. Why I did that? If there's no part in the process, there's no ID to display. So that's why I'm setting the value to be an empty string or just an empty text. In the on run event, while the simulation is running, the process point conveyor is waiting for a part to trigger its sensor. Once the part triggers the sensor, this function called process IT is being called and it's being given the part that triggered the sensor. So if we go to line 66, you can see here's the function, here's the argument it's being given, and here's some line of code that I added to the script. I'm checking if the part has a property called product ID. If it does have an, uh, that property, I'm then using its value to update my component property that I have in the conveyor. If it does not have that property, I'm setting the value of that string to be none. It doesn't have the product ID. After the part leaves the process, you can see here on line 94, I'm setting that part product ID to be empty or an empty string because there's no part in the process anymore. And the whole thing just repeats itself in this while loop here. So we can see in real time while the simulation is running, there's no part in the process, but now there is, so the value updates. After the process is over, you know, the part leaves, the ID is empty. When I reset, you can see there's no part in the process, so the ID is empty. But how is that information being given to this label or this display here? Well, I'll show you. Let's go back to the Home tab. And the Statistics Display component you can find in the eCatalog panel. So under Models by Type, go to Miscellaneous, and you'll find it here. Statistics Display. You can view the metadata of the component to see a description about it. I'll just quickly talk about it here in the video. What this component does is it displays lines of text. Now those lines of text can reference statistics in a component as well as properties in a component. And it can do that for any component in the 3D world. For example, in the Component Properties panel, you can see I have the option to add new lines of code. So if I want, I can clear the lines. 
I get a prompt saying, are you cray cray? No, I'm not. Please delete them. So now there's nothing displayed here. But if I want, I can either add one of these preset properties here or just choose property and then select a component in the 3D world that I want to get that property from. For example, it could be the conveyor, the feeder I'm using to create parts, but for my case, it's the process point conveyor. I'm then given a list of options. Which property do you want to use in that component? Well, there's many properties in the conveyor, but I want to use the one I added called part product ID. And then I'll click add line. And now I can display the value of that property. Of course, you can add whatever text you want to to be the title for that line. I can you know, write, my baby cat is meow. It's a terrible, terrible title, but let's run with it. So I'll clear the lines. I'll click OK, and then I'll add the line. And you can see, here we go. And if I run the simulation, we can see the ID. It still works of 222. But of course, our title you know, is nonsense, so let's clear it out. Click OK. And you can just add, you know, whatever title you want, add it again. And let's see, Proctor D apart. You can add multiple lines, you can see here. But let's clear them out again. And just add that one line. Yep, still works. So you can edit the display while the simulation is running as well as when it stopped or reset. But if you want to edit the colors that are uh, of the display, you have to reset the simulation. So instead of transparent yellow, let's use maybe orange. Halloween color. And everything still works. All right, this concludes the video. If you have any more questions, please feel free to visit our forum at forum.visualcomponents.com. And as always, have a wonderful day.